Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm Star Lord. So, Dishonored 2. It has been quite some time since a decent stealth game has been released. Thief was probably the latest, and I'm gonna be honest, in most critics' eyes, it pretty much failed in terms of expectations and gameplay. So, the next big question is will Dishonored 2 follow that same path? Now, as a newbie to the Dishonored universe, I had no experience with the game series at all, including the story. After the opening of the game, which catches you up on most of the recent events in the Dishonored universe, I found myself content, caught up, and ready to dive into this story. Once the main story kicks off, you are then tasked with choosing your preferred gameplay style, one of the many decisions that you will make in the game. These gameplay styles being stealth or action, two of which pose many different gameplay elements that shape the game, story, and the world around you. Now, personally, I choose stealth in many games, as I just kind of like being a sneaky bitch. But in all seriousness, I love the stealth traits and elements that games allow you to do, and Dishonored certainly is no letdown on that front. From scouting through keyholes, hiding dead and unconscious bodies, to the awesome stealth and strategy weapons that the game allows you to find, buy and upgrade, this game is certainly shaping up to be a great stealth game. And dare I say it, maybe even one of the best. Now, it isn't all stealth, as I mentioned, there is a action style of play, which puts you in the control of Corvo, the character from the original game. His powers are less subtle and allow a great deal of chaos. Admittedly, I never actually played much of his gameplay style, but from the blink teleporting to the controlling of rodents, I found it very enjoyable, and I know whatever gameplay style you choose, you will more than likely be satisfied. So one thing I certainly didn't expect from this game was the free roaming toy box aspect, which actually allows us as the players to spend more time in the game finding hidden areas, collectibles, and random fun stuff to do. One of my favorites being to menace innocent civilians. So, half of the time, I found myself being sidetracked from the main game and roaming around the city's rooftops, enjoying the view, listening to the AI's expansive conversations, and even finding silly but rather creative ways to kill people. That last one definitely being my favorite. It's a pretty fun game in that kind of aspect. Now, personally, when I find a story-focused game that has a slight open-world feel to it with collectibles and choices such as the ones Dishonored gives you, I find it has the best rewards a game can give the players, and that is definitely replayability. The more you get into the game, find collectibles and upgrade your equipment, the more you will feel like an absolute badass. The game's level design is created so well to suit both the gameplay styles that when you do something like using one of your abilities to take down a target without even needing to be in the same room, you will feel satisfied. Like, the kind of satisfaction that you kind of get from, you know, like when you open a yogurt and like none of the yogurt is actually on the lid. Yeah, that kind of satisfaction. <laughs> so, the, yeah, that's pretty much the way I could describe that. Yeah. Talking about satisfaction, you know those awesome gory kills from like the games like Fallout and the Elder Scrolls series, the ones in which like kind of have the animation? Yeah, well it seems like Dishonored 2 is not shy of using those. There is a lot of awesome animations and definitely some awesome death physics that you can mess around with in this game, such as slicing a person's head off, slicing their arm off, or even chopping them completely in half. Off. It is just absolutely insane, and yeah, it's kind of creepy me saying that that's satisfactory, but it's kind of true, in my opinion, anyway, so yeah. But anyway, as always with me personally, it is not all rainbows and unicorns. I have one minor nitpick, and that is the game's graphics. I found that on my Xbox One, there was a slight blur to most of the objects in the game, and that nothing was really defined, sort of like the game lacked sharpness. 
This kind of caused me a slight annoyance throughout the whole first hour of my gameplay, but then after a little while and my son came home, I kind of took my mind away from it and then I got used to it. And if I'm honest, that is literally my only nitpick about this game. This well-designed, multi-optional, first-person game which the team at Arcane Studios have created is without a doubt a brilliant gameplay and story-focused experience that I would definitely recommend to even the players like me who have no knowledge of the game's universe at all, to at least try. Anyway guys, I hope that you all enjoyed this review of Dishonored 2, and if you did, then like the video, and make sure to go and check out my other content, and until next time, I've been Star Lord. I'll see ya!